She's been in the education sector for 36 years, since 1984. She was the principal of Queenstown Secondary School, uh, Anderson Secondary School, and later Victoria Junior College, before becoming Director of Schools in the Ministry of Education and Deputy Director General of Education. She joined the Institute of Technical Education, or ITE, in February of 2017, and has been serving as its principal and CEO since. Lo Kagig, welcome to Thank Inconvenient you. Questions. Thank you, yeah. So let me cut to the chase and ask you the first question, right? When you were first told that you're going to be crossing over to ITE, how did you feel? And, and at that point, you had no experience outside, no experience teaching or being outside of the mainstream of education. And I'm sure you'd have heard all kinds of comments about ITE and ITE students and so on. I'm sure there was some trepidation. How did you feel? So let me first correct, uh, that, correct you that it is not that uh, I was given the job. I actually asked for the job. Right. I have spent a good number of years in the general education. What you just introduced in terms of me having a stint actually as a teacher and as a head of department in Queenstown Secondary School, as a principal in Anderson Secondary School. And in those two schools, I have come across students from the express course, the normal academic and the normal technical. And I've always been curious what happens to the students after they left secondary schools. So when I was asked to um, consider a different posting outside of the general education, I said I would like to go to ITE because I, I do want to know and make a difference to whether it's a normal academic or normal technical students. And I know that ITE plays a very impo important part of their education journey because it is from ITE that they go for further studies or they go for work. And I am very sure I will be able to create a, a, a lot of impact if I join ITE. Yes, I take the, the, the point that um, my experience has largely been in the general education system, but I do know the learners, I do know the learning style, I do know how to motivate them, I know about looking after beyond their educational needs to all the other emotional needs that they have, and uh, I am just very passionate about wanting to help them discover and to build their lives beyond um, the, their education. Yeah. I mean, that's great. It's, it's wonderful to hear that you actually asked for this job, right? Uh, a quick, a quick uh, recap, perhaps, about why ITE? What was the intent of forming ITE uh, in 1992, I believe, 28 years ago? Uh, before that, it was, it, it was the Vocational and Industrial Training Board, or VITB. What, what was the intent in changing the name? Right. I think um, before 1992, when it was uh, VITB, it accepts students uh, after, second, after primary school. But when, uh, even at the MOE, there, there's a realization that it is good to build a strong foundation. So it is good to, for all Singapore students to have 10 years of basic education before they explore the post-secondary option, which is why uh, ITE in 1992 becomes a post-secondary institution, meaning that we only accept students after they've completed 10 years of basic education. And right, it right. actually gives us a chance when the foundation are well laid, it gives us a chance to actually build on that and help them to, to uh, go for higher level technical skills and the technical skills are supposed to bring them to jobs as well as bring them to further education. And, and isn't it true also that IT is, is like the last opportunity to ensure that these, these kids come out with skills? Because yeah. if they don't go through, they become school dropouts and if they were school dropouts, they don't have any real skills and they could end up in, 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 in jobs where where, which may not be satisfying. Yeah, there has been a, a big concern. Um, our, when our students come to ITE, we are very clear that it is about building skills so that they can have employment 
Yeah. And it's also about skills so that they can also go further because it is not just preparing them for one job and the same job for the rest of their life. It is and, 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 and you're, you're aware, you're aware of, of the way IT is being described. Okay. You know, it's the <laughs> end. IT stands for it's the end. Um, you are now saying that it's not the end. But right. there is a general notion that that's it. You know, if, if you end up in IT, that's the end. What's your response to this? So to, to, to all of us here, my staff and I, we would like to correct this misperception that it is the end. Actually, what I want to say is that when the secondary school students come to ITE, they look around them at the facilities, they look at the programs, they look at the success stories of other ITE graduates, and they know that actually it's not the end. It is a chance to reset the button, rebuild their lives, rediscover their passion and reinvigorate so that there is now the drive and purpose to press on I mean, for I've higher come, things. I've come across literature, you know, Kagek. I've come across literature that says that when IT, even when IT was formed, uh, the students of ITE faced low self-esteem. Mm. Right. Uh, because uh, as well as morale, because they were generally perceived as underperformers, uh, people with no options in life, you know, very uncharitable. But that was the general perception. Now, have things changed very much since then over the years? I think we need to acknowledge that for the first 10 years of the students education journey in the primary school and secondary school, they, they, they did not succeed or they did not do very well but when they come to ITE we offer them a difference we offer them very hands-on training hands-on learning it is using uh, all the authentic equipment and the staff plays a big role we believe in them we value them and we build, rebuild their confidence yeah. and but, we do have examples that they I think they, they thrive on praise and recognition and opportunities. If we continue to reinforce the same mindset that um, this is that much they can do and they can't go far, it would not help the students. So we tell them to, dis to not carry a, uh, the emotional baggage with them. When they come to ITE, it is indeed a reset button. And right, they have a right. chance to rediscover what exactly are the strengths. And we also make make sure that we don't teach the same way. We don't put them in classroom with a whiteboard. We actually bring them into workshops and labs and centers and so on. And whatever course that they're in, we actually emulate the industry. If they are in the marine industry, then we have simulation of what uh, the kind of shipyard they're going to encounter. If they are in the aeronautical uh, industry, you know the ITE, we have a garage with many yeah. different kinds yeah. of aircraft. So we, we, because they deal with real things and they know that the, whatever they're learning has a purpose. It's not something so theoretical and remote that they cannot uh, relate to. As a result, I, I our students here are a lot more engaged. They, are, they, they, they found their passion. Uh, somebody has asked me the question before that um, does, uh, are the ITE students motivated? Are they a very ill-disciplined lot? Mm, mm. Uh, can I say that when I joined in uh, February 2017, and it was the start of the new school year for, for, for the students, and I look at the orientation, I look at how the students move around, and actually, my point was yeah, exactly like my JC students, and I've been a principal of Victoria, Victoria Junior College, and they are also the same age group. They are yeah. they just finished uh, their secondary four, so it's the same 17, 18 year old. They are passionate, they are full of energy. So the point is how to um, ignite the correct button, the correct yeah. drive, and help them build the confidence and purpose. Yeah. And, and would, would you so, so are you saying that all this notion um, e e even even press stories you know about gangsterism uh, about how they have been uh, they've been involved in fights carrying weapons um, how they the, the, even the teachers are not very motivated all these all these stories have been going around uh, obviously what you're sharing appears to be quite different right I, I must first say that I have 28,000 students 
28,000 students do represent a small microcosm of society. That's and right. I, I cannot say there are no bad heads or that there are no uh, students who are somewhat um, distracted from their studies or, or join the wrong group and are involved in wrong activities. We do have a small group. But my advice to, the, to this group, so we do have students who, who probably uh, did something that is not right, uh, uh, something against the law, and they will have to pay the price for it. And we do tell the students, you, 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 you pay the penalty for, for whatever offence you have made, but you come back to ITE. So this actually reflects the philosophy of ITE. We are very inclusive in terms of wanting to care for the students and we will readmit them in because we know that the education at ITE is so precious to them. They need it all the more. Yeah, but having said that, I still need to, to reiterate that it is a small handful of students yeah. who, and, and, and who frankly, went down the wrong path. Yeah. Yeah. And, and frankly, uh, Kake, I mean, if, if, I may, if I may say this, I don't think it, it really matters whether the students come with, with baggage. The, the truth of the matter, if that's a reality, so be it. But what's important is that the, that the ITE, the colleges, the three colleges, and the faculty, the, stu the, the student leaders and everyone together are committed to helping these kids turn around. Am I correct? And, and yes. I think, I think that, that puts you on a higher pedestal. You know? uh, if you ask me, if you go to RJC and you've had a, you've had a great life, you come from a, from a, from a well-off family and so on, um, I, I, I don't think that is achievement enough. For me, the, the real achievement is whether ITE has what it takes, the commitment, the conviction to turn these kids around and give them hope and put them, put them up there. I, I, let me share one or two stories with you. Yes, please. The, the students, um, they, when they graduate, and then we have the graduation ceremony, right. the parents come, and it is very heartwarming to listen to the students' stories. They always attribute their success or the little progress that they have made to the staff. They say that, I mean, if I use their words, they say, uh, I want to give up on myself, but my teacher went on and on, have not given up, is prepared to walk alongside me, uh, call me, text me, make sure I, I attend lessons, make sure I overcome my problem. So yeah. the, the students are very much uh, touched by the care and the perseverance of the staff. And where does all this perseverance come from? because our staff believe in them. Actually, when we believe in the students, the students will rise to the occasion and surprise us with how much they have and sometimes even surprise themselves. That's right. And for all the graduation ceremonies, you will find when the parents are, are here, uh, some will shed tears because they said that they, they have actually seen their children struggle in the first 10 years. Not a word of praise. If they are caught by the school, they are very frightened. Yeah, <laughs> it may yeah. be for something very bad. But when they come to ITE, they see that their children rediscover their passion, uh, become motivated and making a success out of their journey with yeah. us and being able to build um, pathways to go further. Yeah. Um, so the parents are very uh, touched by what is yeah, because, happening. Because you've made it, because these kids at some point and maybe, maybe a lot of their lives have been told that they can't make it, mm. you know, have been hearing negative messages and, mm. and your your colleagues and you have, have actually turned that, you know, and, and that's where I think the real achievement of IT is, you know. I've, I've, I mean, I've often asked myself, what would Singapore be if there was no IT? Mm. Would Singapore be a better place if there was no IT? What's your response to that? Of course not. Singapore needs ITE because whatever it is, I think children are different. Their brains are wired differently and some may prefer a more hands-on kind of learning. Some are late bloomers. So ITE is a place for them to have a, a restart, a second chance. And with a second chance, actually they, they may go very far. And, and they can rebuild their life. So it's important that ITE continue to carry this role yeah. and continue to have, be a place for students like students who are late. That's right. Learners. Now, would you say, if I could ask you this, right? How would you characterize the teachers, the principals of ITE? How would you characterize them? 
we so it is not about the kind of technical skills we have, the, the kind of connections we have with, with industry. I think it all starts from the heart. We, we must care enough for the students. And we must accept the students for whoever they are, whatever background, whatever different kind of disposition or inclination or, or preferred uh, learning style or working style. Yeah. We accept who they are, we value them, we respect them, and then we work with them. And we must care enough that they complete their education here, and we must also care enough that they have jobs, care enough that they can have, they are able to build their lives. So we also keep an eye on what happens after they leave ITE. So beyond jobs, uh, we are thinking in terms of there must be career progression for them, there must be, I mean, a, a, a pay progression as well, and they must be able to build good lives for themselves and have families yeah. and yeah. fulfilling lives. Yeah. How do you actually bring in people like these as teachers? Um, we hire our teachers from the industries because suppose we have a, a nursing course or a, a hotel management course, obviously it's good if they come from the industry. They can bring along with them uh, expertise, knowledge, as well as the skills and understanding of the work processes. Mm, mm. But when we interview them, we, 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 in, we check for the passion for youth yeah. and the passion to, to be able to like, uh, not just teach well, but to really care. We, we go for that. Yeah. That's important. That's so important. Now, what would you say is your biggest challenge? The biggest challenge that IT is facing today, what, what, what do you think it is? Um, the, the challenge is in uh, the employers must support us mm. and support us in two ways. One, they must support us in terms of providing our students the opportunity to go to the workplace for internship because our profile of students, nothing like doing the real thing for them to learn. So internship is important. Support us by doing, because now we have a, a, a set of new programs called the Work Study Diploma. That's right, that's where right. Where 70% of the, the upgrading of skills is at the workplace. So the, the employers must uh, join us and become, in a sense, like the core trainer. We do 30%, they do 70%. So they right. must hire our graduates, do the training on the job, and... Uh, allow them to pick up the skills and be promoted to the next level. So and, we need and that, employer that's an support. That's an idea, for right? That's an excellent idea. It's almost like the, the, the old apprenticeship scheme. It is. There's, there's it a is. strong relationship with the, with the companies. And I'm delighted to hear that more than 200 companies have so far registered. We have 230 companies supporting wow. us this year. That's amazing. And it is for uh, 850 places. And there are 30 different work study diploma because we need to cut across the different industry sectors. Yeah. Right, right. And, and, um, and how are the students taking to this, this, this work-study diploma? Are they, are they taking well to it? The students who like, um, who like the hands-on approach, who like a very authentic kind of learning, they love this. Because not all students are suitable for the full-time diploma form of learning. That's true. So we, we, we are happy that we are able to provide this new pathway, mm. which will bring them to a diploma as well as a career progression. And it, it suits their learning style in terms of them being able to learn on the job. Plus the fact that actually the students also, if they are in this scheme, they also have a salary. Because some of them are from more difficult home background. So, so being able to start work, have some income, but at the same time being able to also achieve the diploma is so important. Right. I just want to highlight one more point. The, the purpose of the work study uh, when we went into it, it's not, not just about helping our students be able to upgrade to a diploma via a different pathway. It is also to ensure career progression. Because we have strong engagement in the industry, we That's ask right. the employers to support us, co-develop the curriculum with us, and we tell the employers, after the two and a half years, you must promote them. Yes. Otherwise, it's just a paper chase, right? Yeah. You must expose them to the necessary uh, uh, work and, then, and the skills. And then up, after they achieve the diploma, you must promote them. Then, yes. then to the student, indeed, that is the purpose yeah. of it, a career progression. We, we have been concerned that our students, other than getting employment and the entry-level job, that they are going to work for the next 40 years, right? Yeah. They're very young. So they, there must be opportunity for them to upskill, take on a higher-level job, have a better pay, and then continue to move from there. So we, we're happy to work with the 
to start the work study because it gives us a lot of opportunities to work with employers. Um, so employers, I need them for internship, I need them for work study, I need them for, for something else. Um, I need employers to be a bit more um, open in the hiring practices. If the way they hire is to say diploma, then you, you, you practically write our students, the IT graduates off. Oh. They must be, be prepared to say, I look at the skill sets, perhaps IT graduate can do it. I do know of some very enlightened HR practices, especially in the IT sector. They don't talk about qualification at all. They just talk about the job role. They say anyone can apply. And I do know of uh, specific instances where our IT graduates went to apply. And the application mode is like this. I didn't ask for O-level or your qualification. They asked them to perform a task. Mm, and they can mm, do it. Mm, uh, mm. Is, isn't that a much better way to check for the to evaluate, skills? Yeah. To validate whether they have the skills for the job. Absolutely. And that will completely not eliminate or pre prejudge that the IT graduate cannot yeah. do the job. I, I like what I, I'm saying. hoping for more of such HR practices. No, I, I think I think what you're saying is so important because because quite often the, the view is that once you once they finish and they leave, that's it. You wash your hands off. But what I'm hearing from you is that your commitment to the students continue even after they leave ITE. Uh, quickly, I mean how active is your alumni? Um, I do have an alumni association and the EXCO members are very active. They mm. come, they mentor, they, there's a mentorship program. And then among the successful alumni, we do engage them to come and give specific talks to the students for the relevant mm. courses. Mm. Mm. Some of my very successful alumni, they have factories all over the place in China, in Vietnam, in Thailand. Wow. And at one point, pre-COVID, where we're trying very hard to create more um, overseas, uh, industry experiences for our students. So our, our alumni actually use their contacts and network to open up some opportunities so that right. our students get a chance to go overseas, see the related industry. Uh, because I, we also, so we're ambitious for our students. Uh, we also want our students to not just think in terms of job opportunities in Singapore, but right. to also know that they can chase job opportunities outside. in the region and yeah. outside. Yeah. So we're we running out of time, but I, I have to ask you this, right? You, you've been in the education system for decades. Uh, you've been um, Deputy Director General of Education. If you look at the, the way education has changed in Singapore, I think it's been quite phenomenal. So many developments and changes, and IT is one such development, right? And, and IT has won the admiration of people around the world. I mean, you, I think you've got the highest number of visitors coming yes. from all over the world to understand how you're doing. Because I think 2, all of us, per year. Yeah, it's amazing because I think the world is beginning to understand there's a need for us to lift the tide, so to speak, right? But I would, I would suggest to you that the bigger problem, the bigger challenge we are facing right now and, and for a long time is the way society is stratified. There is still a lot of snobbery in society. You know, there is. I mean, even as we speak, uh, some of us are even guilty of that because we have been so accustomed to evaluating success and evaluating a person's worth based on academic performance. You know, do you think that that has shifted? Really? We have been talking about multiple pathways to success, but has it really shifted? Have we really moved away from academic definitions? I mean, definitions based on academic performance. I think there's still some room for us to, to progress in that area. I think you're being diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to be able to uh, use lots of success stories of ITE graduates. Um, they, they came through ITE and then beyond ITE, how do they build their lives? So I, I, I just want to say that ITE gives hope and create new opportunities. There will always be a group of students uh, for whatever reason, uh, in their first 10 years of education, they, they find they do not thrive and mm. uh, they, they find themselves coming to ITE. But I want the, the students coming here to know that there's a life here in ITE and post ITE and they can build themselves up and be able to still have a bright future. And which is why the stories of the alumni Are very is important. very useful and inspiring for them. Yeah. Um, it starts with them being able to, to know that it's possible. So the belief uh, and uh, being inspired.
Right. And then we very do quickly, the, rest of, the rest of the work together yeah. with them. We run out of time, but very quickly, in a very quick and simple way, what is your message to society? My message to society is that our children, our youth, they are all Singaporeans. We value them. We want to help them build careers, build lives. And we have a part to, to support them. And when they are here in ITE, please support them. When they are out there working for you, please support them as well. And believe in them. Yes. Belief is the key word. And, and let me take this opportunity, Kage, to thank you and your wonderful colleagues at ITE for bringing thank that belief and hope to our kids. Thank, thank you. you. We, we, we believe in our mission and we believe in our work too. Thank you very much. Thank you.